It is a Rick coming at you one more time from codewithintent.com. And today I'm going to be talking to you about specifically software, the software industry in the U.S. and what that looks like in this space. So for all the international people, all our international listeners, all of our uh, people that are outside the U.S. that have been uh, bringing forward with this question of what it actually is and what it actually does being in the U.S. specifically working with software. That's what we're going to talk about today. And if you have a question for me, make sure you click the like button below. Make sure you drop me a comment and you double tap that heart. First of all, if you want to go ahead and work in the U.S., if you're outside of the U.S. and you want to go get some sort of work permit or some sort of work visa to be uh, quote unquote sponsored into uh, coming into the US and working here. There is definitely companies out there that are willing to do that. But from my personal experience, I've only met one developer that has been able to do that successfully. And uh, he was able to do it because he had a advanced degree and he had multiple awards that he won in his country, which was Russia. The company that actually sponsored him to go over and work with them was specifically called Facebook. I don't know if you heard of it. They're still kind of up and coming. They have this live platform, which isn't that great. Um, it went ahead and sponsored them to go over to uh, San Francisco and be uh, a worker there as a, as a developer. He was more specifically focused on the machine learning side of things. And because uh, of the thing, the work that he was doing, he could actually do it remotely. And that's how I actually met him. I met him down um, when I was traveling and he was telling me about uh, some of the work that he was doing. And, uh, you know, I asked him like, well, how were you able to actually you know get that work permit work that get that work visa and be able to work out of the u.s how would you do that and he just pretty much told me what i just told you advanced degree and a company willing to sponsor you that's it so if you are currently in uh, in a different country and you want to go ahead and migrate over to the u.s and try to figure out how to do that um try to figure out how you can get your advanced degree where the whatever that might be um, this is typically a four-year university here in the U.S. Outside the U.S., I know the universities work a little bit different and the, the degree mechanism is sometimes three years, sometimes it's five years, depending on the country you're in, and they have completely different titles for them. You just have to go ahead and just make sure you have your advanced degree and start applying for jobs that are willing to sponsor uh, individuals that are outside the U.S. Uh, so these are kind of your Fortune 500 companies that are willing to uh, get some of the talent from outside the U.S. And if you are uh, actually, if you actually have the skill, if you actually have the, the ability to be able to do the work, it is not impossible. It's definitely doable. You just have to go ahead and look for the companies that are looking for that specific uh, vertical of skill and be able to apply for those jobs and see if you can go ahead and get uh, your work permit to work out of the, the U.S. That's the legal way to do it, right? That's, that's the way to go about it. And that's the way you can do it if you are pretty much established already or if you're trying to become established in the U.S. and actually uh, live here permanently. So there's the whole, the whole entire uh, student thing where you become a student, you come here, you study here, and then depending on what you do here, you might end up staying here. There's the whole natural, neutral, neutralization, naturalization process. I'm not going to get too much into that, but that's definitely a possibility. Um, I, I don't know too much about that specifically, but you can definitely look into it and see if you can get a, um, a way for you to be able to study in the U.S. and then hopefully stay afterwards. But I don't know the exact steps for that because I have not gone through that process. There's also the other one, which is just simply applying to be able to um, move here. Now, that's that's an entirely different process. That's, that's how I actually ended up being here. And... Uh, yeah, that's kind of the, the path that I took, and that was when I was much younger. And then finally, the last one, the last one. <laughs> I have to bring this up because there's there's a lot of stuff going on right now, specifically in the news, and uh, a lot of the things that are happening um, in the whole illegal immigration discussion and the whole DACA thing that's happening, and you know, Dreamers and all of that fun stuff. So, if you decide to come to the country illegally, which I I do not. I'm not going to encourage that in any way. But if you do decide to do that, um, it's not a good thing. Uh, there's, you know, specifically, you know, living here in Utah and, and looking at some of the immigration policies and, and actually having uh, family members that are legal here in the States. Um, it is definitely a, a disability to be able to um, 
live a normal life. Like you constantly live in fear, you constantly live in in, in despair. You can't, it's it's a struggle with getting a job, the whole entire thing. Now, if you were brought here and you were a kid, so you know, from one to eighteen in that age range, and you were brought here illegally, and uh, you know, most of your life you lived here, and then at one point you decided you know, to apply for a driver's license or, or go ahead and go sign up for college and you find out that uh, you've been here illegally, <laughs> which sucks. And this is the dreamers, right? You know, DACA supporting DACA, entire thing that's happening now. Um, and that, that is a horrible thing because at this point, you're, you're, the only thing you know is the U.S. And when that kind of disappears, it's like, well, where, where do, I, do I go? Where do I belong? And, um, you know, my heart goes out to anybody that's... Uh, currently in that space if you're outside the u.s and you're trying to come here make sure you do it legally make sure that you file the right paperwork make sure that you apply for the right companies make sure that you do the work that you can in your country and make the switch whenever you're ready to come over here once you're actually here once you're actually here working and uh, what do you expect uh, i'm not going to get too much into that like the, the actual companies and the actual work I have entire videos where I go ahead and discuss like the work environments, the people you end up working with, what kind of office you have, all of that stuff. Um, if you want to know more specifically on how, how that's actually going to be, uh, head over to uh, learnmean.com. That's learnmean.com. And I have a five part video series where I talk about uh, should you work for a startup? Should you work for a large organization? Should you work for a game development shop? What, what type of work should you do? Like this specifically goes ahead and talks about that. And then I also go and talk, go ahead and talk about the compensation. So how much is your salary going to be? Are you going to be working for sweat equity? Are you going to be getting your free lunch? Are you going to be getting your clothes like washed for you? Are you going to be having all these different things like professional development? Uh, go ahead and talk about specifically about those things. So if you want to know the exact specific things about working in the U.S. and the exact benefits that you will get as far as wages and you know benefits, uh, insurance, all that fun stuff, um, head over there. I go ahead and talk about that extensively. This call was more specifically about the, the question of, hey, if I'm outside the US, how can I come over and work out of there?